Epic All Dayer Bike Park Slayer. Hi, I'm Matt with Jetson USA. I am here with an intense carbine and it's, uh, it's a lot of different bikes all rolled into one. I think the thing that we're seeing right now with bicycle design is that there's all these different categories that bikes fit neatly into and we're getting more and more specific and specialized with the way that we design bikes. And this bike is designed to do all those things. It's not extreme in any one way with, with geometry or suspension setup, but it is designed to do, it can be your park bike, your all mountain bike, your trail bike. It can be all of these things. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about why that is and what makes this bike so versatile. When I first got on a carbine, I looked at the numbers, 155 millimeters of rear wheel travel, 160 millimeters of front wheel travel. It's got longer chain stays, they're 445 millimeters. I thought to myself, yeah, this thing's gonna be a big sled. It's gonna be great whenever the going gets fast and uh, you're on really rough, steep terrain. Sounds perfect for that. Just the numbers tell me that that's gonna be the case. But I was really concerned, like, is this gonna be a real world usable bike, something I'd wanna ride every day? And I was really pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, I, I think whenever we look at the amount of rear wheel travel, it fits in nicely between like a, a Santa Cruz High Tower LT and their Mega Tower. And that's a really great place to be. So I was trying to compare those two bikes to this bike in my mind whenever I rode it. And I think I came back and said, this is a lot more like the Hightower LT. It still has that playful, nimble feel in spite, of, in spite of having a little bit more travel. And I think that's because whenever Jeff Stever designed this bike, they use a design called JS Tune Suspension. It's, it's a variant of VPP or Virtual Pivot Point Suspension. They designed a lot more anti-squat into it. So you still have a lot more support in the mid-stroke and so it pedals really well and it doesn't seem to wallow in, in the mid part of the travel. So it just makes it feel more lively, uh, a little more poppy. It, it doesn't have that really dead planted feel to it uh, in spite of being a big bike with big capability. So uh, I think the biggest surprise for me was like climbing, uh, like on tight switchbacks, uphill switchbacks, that kind of thing, where I would think, man, that really long wheelbase may be a big detraction. I really didn't notice it. It still handled really well. Uh, for sure, it descends great. I mean, that's really where it shines, where it's in its element. It has a 65 and a half degree head tube angle. So a lot of capability there. And this is where we're gonna start to get into the big debate about bike design. It's got a 74 degree seat tube angle. Uh, right now, the, the big movement is everybody going to steeper and steeper seat tube angles. I would tell you, if you all you do is climb really steep stuff and descend really steep stuff, go get yourself a bike with a 76 degree seat tube angle, a 77 degree seat tube angle. If you ride in more varied terrain, you're, you're gonna find that there are some places where you're not crazy about that really forward seating position. Um, it's great at some things, but there are things that's giving up. With this bike having a 74 degree seat tube angle, it just felt like when you're descending high speed stuff, still in the saddle, pedaling descents, that kind of thing, it just feels more balanced and you just feel really at home on the bike. Uh, there's just, the, your weight is nicely balanced between the two wheels and so it really descends well and feels super stable. Uh, I think the thing that really works for them is because the suspension kinematics have more mid-stroke support, on that steep climbing, you're not sagged so far into the saddle, so they didn't have to, they didn't have to go so extreme with the C-tube angle, and it just all kind of works together. So I think that was the the big takeaway for me is, man, this is a bike that really works in a lot of different conditions, and I think it just it has no Achilles heel. It just really works well a lot, and uh, and I loved, I really loved the way it handled and uh, and the way that the suspension tracked. So let's talk about this model. This is the Pro model. They do have four models. The Pro model is a deal. It comes in at $54.99. Uh, obviously, you're getting a full carbon frame, carbon in the main triangle, in the rear triangle. The suspension on this model, you're getting a Lyric RCT3, which is really nice. Uh, you're getting a RockShox Super Deluxe shock at the back. So that's top level kit. Uh, in terms of rolling gear, we're also looking at DT. M1700 wheels wrapped in my favorite big mountain tire, which is the Maxxis Minion DHR2. Uh, these things were just, again, they just work everywhere. They do great. Uh, for the most part, 
It's kind of a GX X01 Eagle mix with the drivetrain, so that's a good place to be. And then, you know, some other high quality bits. You're getting an intense recon stem, it's got an intense carbon handlebar, uh, Fox transfer dropper, a really nice fabric saddle. If you haven't ridden one of these, get on one. It's, it's just the right density and it's really comfortable. Uh, it also has a carbon crank, so it's a Trevative Descendant carbon crank. Great package, a lot of value at $54.99. I think if you compare it to other bikes out there, you'll see that they're $1,500 or $2,000 below where a comparably spec bike would be. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any more questions, reach out to a gear advisor. Like all the bikes that we ship in Jensen USA, this will come in a box to allow you to get on the trail in three minutes or less. Thanks and keep pedaling.